All right, what's up everybody? This is Rant, AKA Darth Lugia, and today we're gonna to be hopping into an unboxing of the Ironheart Marvel Champions Hero Pack. So um, if you watch my latest video, it is an unboxing of the Nova Pack. Um, I do a brief explanation of what Marvel Champions is, and I'll do an even briefer one now. You play as your favorite Marvel heroes, and you team up against villains. So, uh, Nova and Ironheart released at the same time, and I am definitely more enthusiastic about Ironheart because her gimmick is incredibly unique. So let's go ahead and read about it real quick. We're going to go ahead and look at her poster, which is right here. Oh, come on. Right here. And then we will read about her ability. Okay, so first, after a senseless act of violence took the life of her best friend and her stepfather, Riri Williams used her super genius intellect to reverse engineer Tony Stark's Iron Man design and create her very own power armor. She now soars the skies as Ironheart, determined to rid the world of the cruel fate she once endured. So she's got new rules, progressing identity cards. So essentially, um, I know this, so I'm not going to read it, you know, uh, for you, word by word. I'm going to explain it once we get into actually the cards themselves. But it just comes with leadership, which is one of my favorite uh, aspects. One of my favorite decks to play right now is Star-Lord Leadership. So this is her deck. Let's see if we can open this as easy as we did the Nova. So again, this is going to have her character specific cards, the ones that only she can use and that she has to use whenever she um, plays, as well as leadership cards that can go with uh, any hero who's running leadership and uh, a few other cards that we're going to take a look at. So let's go ahead and set her cards aside here, get her leadership cards. The color of the blue really helps with the leadership. It makes it just really pretty here. Got a lot of basics, I like that. Then finally, her special obligations, and then the extra cards that we will go into at the very end. Okay, so let's start by checking out Ironheart. So she is unique in the fact that she has three different hero cards. So we are going to go ahead and explain how this works. So she starts on her weakest one, which is this. Uh, you see that she's working on the silver helmet there, and that is the same helmet that is on the other side. It says version one right here. So that's how you keep track of these. Version one, version two, version three. So similar to Iron Man, if any of you guys have actually played the Iron Man hero from the core set, she is all about building herself up until by the end of the game, uh, she's one of the most consistent, most powerful, best heroes possible. So the way she does this is through these progress tokens. On her alter ego side, she has the ability, begin the game with this card, set your other identities aside. Child prodigy, action, spend a uh, mind resource, Place one progress counter on Riri Williams. Limit once per round. So once per round, you can do this on your Ultra Ego side. And then if we flip over to her hero side, this has three, two, one. Not an awful stat line, but obviously not incredible. But her hand size is four with a hit points of only 10. So uh, this is how she levels up, essentially. And it's called level up. Action, remove six progress counters from Ironheart, ready her, and swap her with a version two Ironheart. So uh, obviously we put progress counters by using her alter ego side. There's other cards as well that do that. But once you get to six, you're going to want to use her, right? So use her up and then remove six so that you can switch in for her more powerful version, which is version two. Whoops, version two. So you can see uh, the stat line has increased here from uh, one thwart to two thwart, making this a really good stat line already. Uh, 223 is solid. So in this one, um, her hand size now goes up to five, which is huge. And 
She has a similar ability where she removes six progress counters from Ironheart, ready her, then give her a tough status card and swap her with version three. So not only does she get to a free use and readied, she also gets a tough status card to soak up a hit. And she has a little more um, options on this side. You can either spend a tech resource or two of any type. So if you don't have a tech resource, you can spend two of any type to place a progress counter on here. Um, also, I think that her quilts are different on, on every side, which is fantastic. I love the character flavor text. So finally, you will get to upgrade her to her uh, ultimate side where her hand size goes up to six, which is really great for a hero side. Her thwart is three as opposed to two. So this is the only stat that's um, rising, but it is kind of the best stat to have. So maximum efficiency, hero action, remove one progress counter from Ironheart, deal two damage to an enemy. So now those progress counters that you have been cashing in to level her up, instead of leveling her up, each one of those counters does two damage to an enemy. So that's big. Uh, that's pretty awesome because you can still add them on her alter ego side. Um, she can spend one resource of any type, so no longer limited to the tech, and place one progress counter on her. And so this is just one of the many ways that she can put progress counters on her, which in this last form can be applied, um, can be used just to deal straight up two damage for every progress counter. And this doesn't say exhaust. You can do this as many times as you want in a single turn, which is fantastic. So let's go ahead and look at the rest of her kit. So I'll start with her ally. This is Brawn which uh, I looked up as a different version of Hulk. Amadeus Cho is his name. Four cost ally, two thwart, three attack, uh, a gamma champion. While Braun is exhausted, he gains resource, generate a mind resource, limit once per phase. So that's awesome, especially if he attacks or if he defends technically, uh, depending on the turn order, right? Um, he now generates a mind resource, which is a solid effect. Okay, then we get two copies of Flyover. This is a two cost thwart event. Hero action, remove three threat from a scheme and place one progress counter on Ironheart. Two progress counters instead if this thwart removes the last threat from that scheme. So this is powerful. Uh, two for three threat is fine. It's good, it is good, but it's not incredible. However, you also get to the guaranteed one progress counter on Ironheart. And then if you manage to get rid of a side scheme or even just take the last threat off the main scheme with this card, you will also put two progress counters. So I can see myself using this when there's less than three threat, just so I can get the max amount for that progress counter because that feels like what her kit is really designed to do. So we've got two copies of that. But we have three copies of the attack version of this card. So this is a two cost attack event hero action attack, deal four damage to an enemy and place one progress counter on Ironheart. Two progress counters instead if this attack defeats that enemy. So just like Nova, this is pretty dependent on minions being out for you being able to take out some of these uh, uh, enemies. So that way you get the extra progress counters. It makes me curious about her synergy with Nova, if they're gonna be competing with minions uh, to get the max effect or if they're gonna avoid that. But Let's go to her three cost event. This is a skill and it's called Noon Improved. Hero action, choose X different options where X is equal to Ironheart's version number. So you can search your deck for an Ironheart card and add it to your hand, then shuffle. Give Ironheart a tough status card or ready Ironheart. So obviously this is incredible when you're in stage three because you get to do every single one of these effects but I can still see this getting play in stage two because giving a tough status card and then searching a deck for any Iron Heart card you want seems kind of great. So this seems like a great card as soon as you level up. Um, it only gets better as you level up, which is kind of the, the whole key to her uh, toolbox. So that makes sense. So then we have Sector Scan. Reduce the cost to play Sector Scan by X or X is equal to Ironheart's version number. So the most this is gonna cost is two, if your version number is one. Uh, hero action, until the end of the round, you may look at the top card of the encounter deck at any time. This combo's awesome with cards that, uh, heroes that gamble. So Scarlet Witch will be a great example. You can see how many boost icons are uh, coming up. Even uh, Star-Lord, who uh, is gonna be taking extra encounter cards. You can look to see what's gonna be coming off the top of that deck at any time you want, once you play this card.
Very cool. Okay, two of her resources. This is Stroke of Genius. Response, after you spend this card, place one progress counter on your identity and draw one card. So this replaces itself with a new card and gives you a progress counter and is a tech resource. So it can use it in your alter ego to get, uh, essentially use that single card to get two progress counters, which is pretty, pretty phenomenal. Okay, next we have one of her supports. She does have two of them. And this is Ronnie Williams. It's a persona, an alter ego action, exhaust Ronnie Williams, choose to heal two damage from Riri Williams, or place one progress counter on Riri Williams. Riri Williams. So um, this is a fantastic support because it gives you the option. You can, uh, you have to be an alter ego form, but that's okay. Heal two damage is great. Place a progress counter is great, depending on where you're at in the game. Fantastic support. Okay, then we have Tony Stark AI. So this is a two cost support. You can exhaust Tony Stark AI, look at the top two cards of your deck, add one to your hand and discard the other. So this is awesome because it's exactly the same as Tony's ability in his deck. Um, I love that synergy, um, solid card. Okay, and then we have two upgrades. The first one is Photon Blasters. You get plus two hit points, never, under, never underestimate extra hit points. And it's a hero action. Exhaust Photon Blasters, deal damage to an enemy equal to Ironheart's version number. So minimum one, maximum three. And then this is almost exactly the same. Get two hit points again, and then you can exhaust this to remove threat from a scheme equal to Ironheart's version number. Again, minimum one, maximum three. This is going to uh, pay for itself in no time. That is a really awesome uh, upgrade to have. Okay. So those are her... Um, character specific cards so again we get version one version two version three and from what i've heard from what i've looked into just from my own kind of um, instincts right this seems like a super satisfying um, experience to level up your version number until you get to kind of this unstoppable uh big bad eh, big good at the end okay next let's dive into her leadership cards so we'll start with cloud nine Three cost ally, and it's an aerial champion. Hero action, exhaust cloud nine, choose a player. Until the end of the phase, each aerial character that player controls gets plus one thwart. Four cost ally and falcon, one thwart to attack, an aerial champion again. Hero response after falcon attacks or thwarts, spend a energy resource, ready another champion character you control. Okay, awesome. Patriot. Two thwart, one attack. Um, champion, hero response after Patriot enters play, choose a champion character. That character gets plus one to each of its basic powers until the end of the round. Okay, that's great. Go all out. Uh, energy resource. So you have to pay at least one energy resource for this. Hero action, attack, exhaust your hero, deal damage to an enemy. It's equal to the total of your hero's thwart, attack, and defense values. So again, I already said that I play Star Lord. This seems like a pretty great way to get a lot of use out of Star Lord. Uh, he has a two two one stat line, so that's five. But he has an upgrade that gives every Guardian character plus one thwart. Um, he can ready himself multiple times with a few other cards. Sorry for going into synergies already. Just there's some potential to a card like this. Okay, we have a uh, three cost event push ahead thwart. Yo, the Spider-Man Noir. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, that's sick. Okay. Uh, requirement Mind. Hero Action Thwart. Exhaust your hero. Remove threat from a scheme equal to the total of your hero's thwart, attack, and defense. So again, a great way to give people who aren't good at thwarting um, a chance. You know what I mean? Because uh, you can bring in their attack and their defense values. Three copies of that card. Morale Boost. I'm guessing three copies. Yep. And this is a one cost event, hero action, choose a hero. Until the end of the round, that hero gets plus one thwart, plus one attack, plus one defense. This would be amazing for someone like Quicksilver who gets to attack multiple times in one turn. Even Ghost Spider, that would be great for as well. R&D faculty, uh, facility, three cost support. It's a shield location, which uh, pairs well with some of Miles's new cards that he had. Uh, had to spend two mind resources and you get three research counters. Hero action, exhaust R&D facility and remove one research counter from it. 
Choose a friendly character and play. That character gets plus one thwart and plus one attack until the end of the phase. Okay, pretty expensive, but three uses out of this is pretty good. And again, giving this to people who will be able to use it multiple times in a single turn seems great. Oh, and then two copies of Power Leadership. So just a resource card, wild resource normally, but it also uh, is a double resource for when it pays for a blue leadership card. So we've seen those before. Okay, now we have quite a few more basic cards. We have Agent 13, who we've already seen. Um, four cost ally, two thwart, one attack. Response after Agent 13 attacks or thwarts, chooses shield support, ready that support. So I've already seen her, not crazy excited that she's here, but it's not, a, it's not bad. Okay, then we have four cost ally, Snow Guard. Um, this card I'm pumped about. It's a champion. After Snowguard enters play, place up to three shift counters here. While the shift counters here are equal to X, she gets. So if you place one shift counter, she gets three attack and her attacks gain overkill. If she plays two, she gets three thwart and gains the aerial trait. And if you give her three, she gets plus five hit points and gains retaliate one. So essentially, this is a four cost ally that is expensive, but <clears throat> she comes out and is able to adjust to whatever you want her to do. If you need her to thwart, she can thwart. If you need her to attack, she'll do that. If you need her to just sit and be a blocker that just takes out small enemies, you know, with one health, she can do that as well. Love the ability to choose with cards like this. I want more of this. So Snow Guard, great option. Okay, then we have Vivian. Uh, two thwart, one attack. Uh, two cost ally, hero response, after she enters play, choose an attachment, non-elite minion, or non-permanent side scheme. Until the end of the round, treat that card's printed text box as if it were blank, except for traits. So <clears throat> I can see this being great for um, enemies that have guard or patrol, for side schemes that uh, have the crisis icon, uh, for side schemes that make you draw an extra encounter card. I can see this being very useful to shut down those, but it is pretty situational. Okay, then we have one copy of Go for Champions, max one per deck. Play only if your identity has the champion traits, and it's a hero action. Each champion character in play cannot take damage until the end of the round. So this is great uh, if you know you're about to get what uh, <laughs> get mopped by Thanos, right? If you're about to do a huge attack on you, this is really good defense. Okay, we have a Helicarrier. It's been in the game for forever. Um, three cost support, exhaust Helicarrier, choose a player, reduce the resource cost of the next card that player plays by one. And then we have two, oh, I'm sorry, three versions of upgrade. It's a two cost support. Ingenuity, um, play only if your identity has the genius trait. Max one per player. Resource, exhaust ingenuity and generate a mind resource. So I think that Tony also has, Iron Man also has the genius trait. So that is very cool. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at Riri's obligation. So it's called a minor setback and give to the Riri Williams player. Remove one progress counter from your identity, then discard this card. If no progress counters, if no progress counter was removed this way, deal yourself one face down encounter card, then shuffle this card into the dis encounter deck. Wow, that is brutal. Okay, that's a pretty solid obligation. Okay, and then we have rule by force. Side scheme, oh, I'm sorry. Let's actually look at her nemesis first. Lucia Von Bardas, uh, two scheme, one attack. While Lucia Von Bardas has a tough status card, she gets plus one scheme and plus one attack. So running Armadillo alongside her would be rough. Force response after the villain phase ends, give Lucia Von Bardas a tough status card. Wow, lots of tough. Her side scheme is while Lucia Von Bardas is in play, this card gains a hazard icon. And while Lucia Von Bardas is not in play, this card gains an acceleration icon. Okay, cool. So you're not, um, you're still incentivized to keep her out of play, but this punishes you no matter what. So I think that's neat. She has one attachment. It is Cyborg Tech. Attach the minion with the most traits. If you cannot, this card gains Surge. Attach minion gets plus three hit points and gains Retaliate one. Its boost effect is deal this card to yourself as a face down encounter card. So you know it's coming, but you are gonna be getting it no matter what. Okay, cool. 
And then finally, we have two copies of Political Retribution. So when revealed, if Lucia von Barnes is in play, she schemes. If Rule by Force is in play, place three threat on it. If neither is in play, this card gains Surge. So again, very specific. It has a cool effect. Well, surge is an okay effect. But it has an effect no matter what the state of the board is. Whether um, And if both her and her scheme are out, then that does a lot. Um, so very interesting card. Cool. And let's wrap it up with the extra cards that come in her set. Okay. So we first have a um, aggression ally, four cost ally named Bombshell. Two thwart, three attack. Champion, play only if her identity has the champion trait. Divide damage from Bombshell's attack among each enemy as evenly as possible. Interesting. So again, really good at taking out small enemies. Okay, then we have Wasp. Uh, another Wasp. Um, two cost ally, two thwart, one attack. Champion, play only if her identity has the champion trait. Wasp ignores the guard keyword, the troll, and crisis icon. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. A two-cost ally that can basically swerve whatever's on the field. That's not bad. But it can only be used with champion cards. So that is something to keep in mind. We only have two of those as of right now. Okay. Uh, defense, protection ally. Uh, two cost ally, one thwart to attack. Champion, play only if you have the champion trait. Hero interrupt. When a player card will be placed into a discard pile from play, exhaust pinpoint, shuffle this card into its owner's deck. Shuffle that card into its owner's deck instead. When a player card will be placed into a discard pile. So if you have to like discard an attachment or if you have to discard a upgrade or something, then I guess that would that would come off. I do like that this is a card with options. It's a two cost ally and you can exhaust it to use its effect and then take a uh, defend with it, take a damage. So that's not bad. Okay, I'm gonna try and go fairly quickly through these last few. So we have Zax and it's a criminal, two scheme, two attack. Gets plus X attack and plus X hit points where X is equal to the total number of energy resources on cards the engaged player controls. If you have at least two energy resources in your hand, put Zax into play engage with you. Okay, so all about uh, energy resources. Feedback loop. Side scheme, when revealed, each player must place threat here equal to the total number of energy resources in their hand and on cards they control. Again, targeting the energy resources. Then we have two copies of the attachment Haywire. This says attached to your identity. Treat the printed resource of each card in your hand as if it were energy. Hero action, choose to either discard a card you control with a printed energy resources or take two indirect damage to discard this card. Okay. So that, that's a cool combo piece. That's actually a really cool combo piece and it shuts down what Ironheart wants to do because they're no longer en uh, tech, um, mind resources, they're energy. We have one copy of Air Static. This is a condition environment. Force interrupt when the villain phase begins, deal two indirect damage to each player with an energy resource on their hand and or on a card they control. Hero action, choose to either discard a card you control with a printed energy resource or take two indirect damage, discard this card. And finally, we have two zap. So this says when revealed, take indirect damage equal to the total number of energy resources in your hand. If your identity was dealt one or fewer damage this way, this card gains Surge. Interesting. This is an interesting modular set. It doesn't stand out to me as incredibly strong like Armadillo does, but does stand out to me as uh, unique and fun to interact with. So that's cool. Okay, and that is Ironheart. So I am pumped to try Ironheart out. I think that her level up mechanic is great. I hope it doesn't get old, I guess, too fast. Um, but especially with two player games, longer games, I see it being a lot of fun to level yourself up, eventually get to your, you know, your max potential. So that's gonna do it for me. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.